Today we're going to look at the GWIC G2 Pro Fiber Laser. This is a new offering that they have out. I reviewed the original G2 about a year ago. Now the unique thing about these little fiber lasers is the size. So you have a stand that's a fraction of the size of most of them that are available, but you still have a full six inch square work area, 150 by 150 on this particular version. The laser source right here is now a 30 watt uh, power output, yet it's really small and compact, much smaller than most of them on the market. And so this is really nice if you're in a small compact space. And you can also remove this laser head and put it on this little shroud right here to use it handheld on really large objects. Now the G2 Pro here, compared with the regular G2 that I reviewed about a year ago, there are so many different improvements. Let me walk you through this. On the G2 itself, my biggest complaint was the rigidity of the mounting on the stand. They've fixed that and it still has the ability to tilt and you know come in at different angles, but uh, when it's locked in, it's locked in really well. Now they've increased the height of the stand so that you don't have to use riser blocks underneath the uh, laser head and the stand when you move to a rotary fixture or thicker items and that just saves a bunch of time. The original G2 had three different cables and now that's been consolidated into one. That really cleans it up a lot. The box itself is still in a nice compact package, but uh, fans are a lot quieter and it's moved from 20 to 30 watts. So that's a big improvement. And another one of the big uh, shortcomings of the original G2 was the software. And the software on this is the same software, but it's now compatible with Lightburn. So we're gonna try this out uh, with both materials that you'd use in more of an engineering type application for branding, serialization, things like that, as well as some materials you'd use for more of a craft type business. It shipped with custom cut inserts for the box, which is really nice to keep everything protected. I got a couple different rotary fixtures we're going to try out, as well as the handheld shield and some glasses to keep yourself safe. The setup was really easy. Uh, there's the upright to put on there, and notice these little ball features for the mount uh, on the laser head and those detents that go into them. That keeps everything nice and rigid so that it doesn't rock around like the other one and this fit together really well. It's just a thumb screw to hold it on so you can service it really easily. That's all there is to setting it up. There's a motorized lift on this particular version and it has quite a bit of travel so that you can get the laser in focus for a variety of thicknesses of material. To focus it, you can use the twin lasers. You just have to get them to align to a point or you can use this measuring tape on the side, which is really nice. Zero aligns you with the bottom plate. You can put in your material thickness or go old school with a ruler. They include that as well. I liked the key switch addition here as a nice safety feature for uh, something like this. So with the key switch on, the power is on all the time to give you a red light indication of where you're going, get things set up, and then you can turn the laser power on just when you run it for safety. And also because it's pretty easy to engrave where you didn't mean to if you aren't paying attention. So that's a good feature to just leave that off. Let's take a look at the software here. And uh, this is their G Laser software. And you can see that you can do just some very basic design in it. It's not a very strong uh, design software, but if you just want to do something simple, you can draw it right in the software and engrave it right away. So it's good for putting in numbers and things like that. If you want to use something more uh, complicated, you can import uh, both vector and uh, regular raster images. This is a vector image, just uh, one of my logos, and it uh, runs pretty good. So you can see it was almost instant to do the outline there, but you need to add some cross hatching if you want more detail, and that worked out really well. So it's capable of doing all those, but what I'm really excited about is using Lightburn with this. And so this is the new beta version of Lightburn. It's, uh, that's where the compatibility rolls in in version 1.7, I believe it is. And so it definitely was compatible. The default parameters were a little bit off. So I'm going to add some cross hatching and uh, increase the speed by about 10 times. And now it's running really good with Lightburn. So it's verified to be Lightburn compatible. And I think that's really nice, especially if you have a variety of different types of lasers, you can use Lightburn for all of them. Now let's look at a bunch of different materials that you might want to engrave. This right here is just plain uh, mild steel, low carbon steel and it engraves it no problem just a single pass there i think if you added more passes you'd get a little bit more of a shine to it but uh, this worked out really nice 
Now let's move on to some stainless steel. Right here, I'm gonna run two passes on this one and that will just uh, clean it up a little bit. You can see the change in color. And it's really interesting with stainless steel, you can do a lot with the parameters to give different colors and different tones, especially if you're doing more decorative stuff. Um, but either way, it worked out really well. This is another stainless steel example um, on that. Here on aluminum, no problem at all. Aluminum engraves really well with these little fiber lasers, uh, both this one and the G2. And here's another example that I ran with a portable uh, handheld unit. Now let's try it on some brass. This is a brass coin. And this one is solid brass. A lot of the coin blanks that you'll get are just plated with brass, but uh, the solid ones you can engrave a little deeper. Let's first look at it here with just a single pass. And that turned out really nice. You can make all sorts of different things. Here I ran a bunch of different passes to see how deep I could engrave. And I think you could keep going as long as you wanted and it keeps uh, engraving deeper. This is probably half a millimeter or about 20 thousandths of an inch. This right here is some powder coated stainless steel on a water bottle. So it's engraving right off there. We'll look at uh, some of the different settings that you might use when uh, we look at the rotary fixture. But either way, you can see how it engraves that uh, powder coating off and you can dial in your settings not to engrave too deep on the stainless steel. And that definitely works out pretty well. This is a black coated aluminum business card. These are really cool blanks. They usually engrave really well on uh, just about any laser, but you can get such a good grayscale to them. And that's really fun to be able to get an image like that if you're making a business card or something like that. And now we'll move on to some slate. And I just ran that same program for fun and it worked okay, but I think the uh, just monotone works really well in slate. That's just with a single pass right there on one of these slate coasters. And I'm going to run uh, several passes here on this one to see if I can get some depth to it. And you can see how much uh, dust came out of there. And here I'm about 30 thousandths or three quarters of a millimeter deep. And that uh, is pretty cool. So on a variety of different materials, this laser performed really well. Now let's go ahead and look at some of these rotary fixtures. There's the chuck style right here. This could be good for like rings or things like that often. And then these rollers for water bottles and sockets and things like that. So on the chuck, there are just different pins that you can put in to give you a range of diameters. And while it's not the heaviest duty thing that I've seen, it's probably made for rings and things like that. But I'm going to try it with this black oxide coated socket right here, an impact socket, and see how that works out. So I'll run just one more pass. I have the power down pretty low in this case, maybe lower than it ought to be. But it still gave me a nice engrave similar to high vis sockets that you'd buy from the store. So I'll focus this out here and try the roller on this uh, just chrome socket and see how that works to be able to make high visibility sockets. So you can get an indicator of where it's going to start and the height. And here on the rotary fixture, it splits it into segments. And so right here, I was using a fairly wide segment. You can see those faint vertical lines, which isn't really problematic. That allows it to run really fast. In this case, I turned those segments down to be very narrow to where it's more continuous or close to continuous. And you don't really see those vertical lines, but the trade-off is speed. So you can really dial this in to whether you want more of a continuous look or if you're okay with those vertical lines, you can get some high speed. But it's really nice because the actual uh, speed settings don't change on the roller no matter the diameter that you have. So here on this water bottle, I am engraving off the powder coating and you can see those vertical lines when I use the wider spacing. One more pass with it cleans them up pretty well and this gives you know not a bad result at all. And I'm amazed how fast uh, that can run and just track. That was sped up a little bit, but it's still, uh, it's still pretty quick to do. Now here I'm going to run it with the setting uh, much more narrow on the path that it'll do at each time. And with this setting, I don't get those same vertical lines. Now, I'm not going to run a second pass on this one. I'll just run it as a single pass and, and a second pass might clean it up a little bit. But uh, there are several different options. You can really tune the process to what you want to get. So overall, very successful there also. Now let's go ahead and try this as a handheld unit. There are a couple different ways you can do that. You can remove the fixture plate here out of the base and then you can just hold this up and it'll engrave right through the middle onto whatever you're working with. 
or you can remove the laser head and put that directly into this shield and then hold that up to whatever you want to engrave. Now there's a fan to remove the fumes and that used to plug into the laser head but since they went to the single uh, piece connection, from what I can tell there's not a place in the head to plug that in, it plugs into the main unit and that cord is pretty short to be able to do that. You could get a USB extension cord, it's just a USB connection but uh, I think that is a little bit of an oversight on their part with the design change to that single piece cable. Either way, let's go ahead and set it up here and see how that works, if it holds the right focal length, and it seems like it's working really well here on this uh, scrap piece of aluminum diamond plate just to put some uh, engraving on, and that could be pretty nice for larger products that you want to put some customization on. Now at the end of the day, what do I think about the uh, G2 Pro? Well, they made so many upgrades in such a short amount of time from the regular G2, which that was a good unit and I've used it a lot. I still have it over there. Um, but the G2 Pro has the more rigid stand. It has extended height on the stand, so you don't have to use riser blocks, the single connection between the two, um, the quieter fan noise going from 20 to 30 watts, compatibility with light burn. I mean, they really checked off all the boxes and I think they made the perfect fiber laser for a small shop. My only complaint is still the length of this cable off of the uh, fan here, which that could easily be extended or you could use an extension cord. So minor oversight there. And I imagine they'll fix that in future uh, versions as they roll in this design change. But overall, it's a solid unit. Uh, you know, like anything that I check out and review right out of the box, I can't really tell you how it's gonna hold up over time. Time will tell on that, but I know the regular G2 after a year with quite a bit of use um, is still going strong. So I've, I've got that data point to go off of. Thanks a ton for tuning in. We'll see you next time.